So Hello everyone, my name is Gaurav Kant and welcome to my channel Embryo Talks where we discuss basics of embryology. Today I'm going to talk about necrozoospermia and how to tackle it. So the problem with the necrozoospermia is that it is poorly defined. Even the International Committee for Monitoring ART and WHO did not mention anywhere about necrozoospermia. The WHO 2010 manual just says the low percentage of life and high percentage of immortality sperm is in the ejaculate is necrozoospermia. But looking at the reference limit for the vitality, that is 58%, we can say that if the viability is less than 58%, it is necrozoospermia. And if there is no viability at all in this sperm, then it is absolute necrozoospermia. The prevalence of necrozoospermia is 0.2 to 0.48% in infertile patients. Now, how to diagnose the necrozoospermia? We start with the semen analysis, means we look for concentration, morphology, uh, the microscopic and macroscopic examination. But here the main thing is the motility. So how we see the motility, we count 200 sperm. The percentage of moving sperm is the motility. Like out of 200, if 90 uh, sperm are moving, then 45% is the motility. So once we know the motility, if the motility is more than 40%, that means the sample is normal, like this video. Here the sample is normal. On the other hand, if the motility is less than 40%, like in this video, you can see, then we can go ahead towards the asthenozoospermia or necrozoospermia. Now, after knowing that the motility is less than 40%, we move towards the vitality test. So, one of the most common way of doing a vitality test is the eosin negrosin staining. Here, we use the eosin to dye the dead sperm and negrosin to give the dark background. So, what happens here is, because there is a leakage and if because there is a leakage in the plasma membrane dead sperm so this dye eosin moves into them the dying sperm or apoptotic sperm and turn them into pink while those who are viable they resist the inflow of the dye so this is a very common way of knowing the vitality of the semen the second way is the hypoosmotic swelling test so here we put the semen sample into a hypoosmotic condition that is 150 milli or small so all the sperm which are viable and have active plasma membrane, there is an inflow or the osmos, osmotic uh, inflow of water from the surrounding into the plasma membrane and their tails start curling. But those, uh, those who are dead, they have the leakage in the plasma membrane and their plasma membrane is not active. So they don't show any curling in the tail and they remain in the same shape. So after the vitality test, we know if the vitality is uh, more than 58% then it is asthenozoospermia because there are more viable sperm and we can go for medical management or simply activate this sperm with the uh, activate this sperm and do XC. While on the other hand, if uh, the vitality is less than 58%, then it is necrozoospermia. Or uh, if there is no viable sperm, then it is it is absolute necrozoospermia and we are dealing with the dead sperm. So both asthenozoospermia and necrozoospermia are potential cause of male infertility. But we should differentiate between asthenozoospermia and necrozoospermia. Reason being. They both look immotile. But here in asthenozoospermia, there are more sperm viable. While here in necrozoospermia, sperm are dead and apoptotic. So in asthenozoospermia, you can simply do XC, use any chemical to activate the sperm and perform XC and achieve pregnancy. But here, the issue is different. There is a membrane disorder and uh, you may have a high DNA fragmentation. There is a paper published in 2012 which talks about the same thing and they say, that membrane integrity can be considered as pathological process. This can also uh, result in an uncontrolled release of active enzymes and can, uh, and can also lead to activation of apoptotic pathways like oxidative stress resulting into high DFI. Thus, uh, the apoptosis, uh, we know that it can lead to higher DNA fragmentation. This form looks the same. It can also fertilize the oocyte. And this same paper talks about that thing that they used a tunnel assay and they found that there is a higher DNA fragmentation exceeding up to 80% in necrozoospermia. And there is a statistical significant correlation was found between the sperm DNA fragmentation and necrozoospermia. So now we know that this both sperm, apoptotic and non-apoptotic, uh, they look same. They can fertilize the oocyte, but the apoptotic one has the high DNA fragmentation, can lead to poor embryo development, poor embryo morphokinetics, poor pregnancy rate, and higher miscarriage. So what are the causes of uh, necrozoospermia? 
the one thing to avoid while semen collection is using unsterile container using lubricants and using condoms they all have toxins and kill the sperm so please avoid it while uh, taking the semen sample while there are other causes as well like uh, high body temperature advanced paternal age advanced anti anti sperm antibodies uh, early testicular cancer exposure to toxins hormonal causes uh, infection in the male reproductive tract problem with testicles uh, prolonged period of no ejaculation spinal cord injuries free drug use and very cosy nowadays a new thing is coming because lots of divorces are happening and people are not, are not too happy with their marriages so uh, they are uh, remarrying and uh, there is there are cases of reversal of vasectomy which can lead to anti sperm antibodies and can also lead to necrosis for me so there are different ways of treating it like if apidectomy is there uh, you you can have the course of antibiotic hypothyroidism is there you can treat it very cosy you can treat it uh, any good uh, endologist can handle it but what we can do in the ivf lab so we have two scenarios here where one we have the viability in the semen sperm and the second where we have no viability at all so once we have the viability there is a beautiful paper published in 2014 which talks about that if you have viability 5 from 5 to 45 person so they took uh, 231 couples on one arm they did exceed with the ejaculated uh, sperm to 341 342 cycles on the other side they had 181 cycles with testicular sperm fertilization rate was same because an apoptotic sperm can also fertilize the oocyte second there was a higher pregnancy rate implantation rate and live birth rate with the testicular sperm over the ejaculated one and i'm happy to say that that you can achieve a live birth rate of 26.8% using testicular sperm uh in necrospermia can we do something else uh, if we if we don't want to be invasive then there is a method known as max that is magnetic activated cell sorting the main purpose of mag is to separate apoptotic sperm from the non apoptotic one so here the all the apoptotic sperm basically attaches to the uh, magnetic field and non apoptotic basically passes through so what are the advantages of max it works on the molecular level as opposed to the routine like density gradient and uh, swim up it is the only known method which can separate apoptotic from non apoptotic one it is rapid convenient and non invasive so i have not found any paper comparing necrospermia and uh, uh, with max but there is a paper which talks about uh, next role of max in immortals form here they use a uh, max on max with density gradient and density gradient alone and the all samples were having a very good concentration uh, the viability was around 40% and once they used the max with density gradient they found higher viability in the outcome and a lower dna fragmentation rate so we can also use max once we have a lower viability in the ejaculate now we talk about 0% viability that is absolute necrospermia so i found a paper uh, published in 1996 way back but there are no recent paper which talks about necrospermia only so here they took five patients and all having 100% uh, necrospermia and they did the test to biopsy take out the sperm from there they found the viable sperm they did the xc fertilized the oocyte they even achieved pregnancy in one patient as well so when you have the absolute uh, necrospermia there are higher chances of finding motile sperm in the testes you can find the sperm you can do xc and achieve the pregnancy the biggest issue when you have uh, necrospermia with cryptospermia means 0% viability and a few sperm like in the radio so what you can do uh, you have to ask some big expert to do the micro tracer they will biopsy the testes and look for the dilated and the beautiful uh, tubules and uh, take out the exact position where the sperm are and you can actually find the viable sperm from there and do it see so concluding it i can say that we start with this semen analysis we check for motility uh, we rule out stenospermia and necrospermia uh, we look for the etiology and if possible we try to manage it and after that what we can do in the lab if there is a, a some viability in the semen sample we look for max if there is no viability in this uh, semen sample then we look for tes or tes xc and if there is cryptospermia with necrospermia then we look for micro tes xc thank you